the wild kinky facts about in the French quarters in 1897. Storyville was the red light district of New Orleans, Louisiana from 1897 to 1917. It was established by municipal ordinance under the New Orleans City Council to regulate Sydney Story, a city alderman, wrote guidelines and legislation to control within the city. The ordinance designated an area of the city in which although still nominally illegal, was tolerated or regulated. The area was originally referred to as the district, but its nickname, Storyville, soon caught on, much to the chagrin Alderman Story. It was located by a train station, making it a popular destination for travelers throughout the city, and became a centralized attraction in the heart of New Orleans. Only a few of its remnants are now visible. The neighborhood lies in Faubourg Trema, and the majority of the land was reproposed for public housing. It is well known for being the home of jazz musicians, most notably Louis Armstrong as a minor. Storyville took advantage of the city's colorful history by promoting the availability of both French and Octoroon women in its guidebooks and through the tabloid press. French, in the context of a district, signaled special services. Women purported to be one-eighth black were available for the exclusive use of white gentlemen, recalling the antebellum quadroon balls. In addition to so-called octoroons, Storyville further violated the segregation laws by advertising colored and later black women for the use of white men. S across the color line was, according to a prominent citizen in the 1910s, Storyville's notorious attraction. Finally, Storyville nurtured the development of jazz by employing musicians in its brothels, honky-tonks, saloons, and dance clubs. Storyville, despite its reputation as the nation's most notorious red light district, was created to curtail and contain the spread of action in New Orleans. The men who occupied City Hall at the time of its creation had recently ousted the Democratic Ring, a corrupt political machine that held the city in a tight grip, and were eager to reform the city. The original ordinance reads, From the 1st of October, 1897, it shall be unlawful for any public or woman notoriously abandoned to lewdness to occupy, inhabit, live or sleep in any house, room or closet without the following limits. South side of Custom House, Iberville, from Basin to Robertson Street, east side of Robertson Street from Custom House to St. Louis Street, from Robertson to Basin Street. Yet the ordinance also included the proviso that nothing herein shall be so construed as to authorize any lewd woman to occupy a house, room or closet in any portion of the city. Thus the city gave itself the authority to regulate and without technically legalizing it. It was clear almost immediately that the district's creator's plan had backfired. Storyville made and sporting culture more visible rather less and cemented the city's reputation for promiscuous pleasure and illicit The district gained international notoriety. Storyville's promoters, probably led by Anderson, even published guidebooks. Known collectively as the Blue Books, they listed the brothels and the women within according to race. W for white, C for colored, and October for octoroon. Some editions listed French and Jewish women. The Blue Books also carried ads highlighting bordellos and other night spots, like Anderson's saloons as well as ads for liquor and for pharmacists peddling cures for transmitted diseases. In the early 1900s, a Blue Book could be purchased for 25 cents. Blue books were created for advertising the services of the workers of Storyville and included the names of working pro in New Orleans. Arranged by name or address, the pro were also distinguished by race and religion, with special markings for each category. Workers could be identified by such categories as black, white, octoroon, Jewish, or French. Landladies would be identified in bold font and information about popular houses, including interior and exterior pictures, was included. They also included advertisements for national and local cigar makers, distillers, lawyers, restaurants, drugstores, and taxi companies. The fees for general or specific services at the listed brothels were not included. Blue books could be purchased throughout the district in various barber shops, saloons, and railroad stations. Primarily they were sold on the corner of Basin Street and Canal Street. The first Blue Book of Storyville was made between 1895 and 1896 but it wasn't until 1909 that the first popular edition was published. Billy Shrew was its main producer in New Orleans. Shrew, a manager of the saloon of Thomas Charles Anderson, the mayor of Storyville published the books on the second floor of Lulu White's saloon on the corner of Basin Street and Beanville. Approximately 16 editions were published until 1915. 
The district's most famous madams included Lulu White, Willie Piazza, Josie Arlington, and Emma Johnson. Lulu White published her own souvenir booklet for Mahogany Hall, her Basin Street Bordello. The Bordello featured a marble staircase, four floors, two parlors, 15 bedrooms, each equipped with a bathroom, and an elevator built for two. Also called the Octoroon Club, Mahogany Hall was infamous for its so-called Creole beauties. Not all the brothels were so luxurious, many rooms included only a bed and a washstand. Storyville contained a large variety of brothels and parlors to satisfy the diverse tastes of visitors to New Orleans. Mahogany Hall was the most lavish of them, operated by Lulu White, an important businesswoman in the district. Mahogany Hall was an octoroon hall, employing properties of mixed races. It was located at 235 Basin Street. Mahogany Hall employed roughly 40 properties. Popular women of Mahogany Hall included Victoria Hall, Emma Sears, Clara Miller, Estelle Russell, Sadie Reed, and Sadie Letty. Lulu White advertised these women as having beautiful figures and a gift from nature, and gained a reputation for having the best women around. Mahogany Hall was originally called the Hall of Mirrors and was built of solid marble with a stained glass fan window over the entrance door. It had four floors, five different parlors, and 15 bedrooms with attached bathrooms. The rooms were furnished with chandeliers, potted ferns, and elegant furniture. The house was steam heated, and each bathroom was supplied with hot and cold water. The interiors of the rooms of Mahogany Hall filled the ads in blue books and other advertising pamphlets of the period. The hall was forced to close down in 1917 following the closure of Storyville. Originally built for $40,000, it did not sell until 1929, when it fetched just $11,000. The hall became a house for the unemployed in the mid-1940s until 1949 when it was finally demolished. However, the significance of the hall can be found in various museums and in the jazz tune Mahogany Hall Stomp by Spencer Williams. One of Storyville's most notorious madams, Lulu White, presided over one of its most famous brothels, which offered only light-complexion women of color. White's nephew Spencer Williams immortalized her mansion in his jazz composition Mahogany Hall Stomp. Known as the Diamond Queen, for the diamonds she reportedly wore in excess, White was unmatched in self-promotion. She issued her own souvenir booklets, and her photograph appears in both her own guide, New Mahogany Hall, and the Red Book, though the accuracy of the depictions has been disputed. In New Mahogany Hall her likeness bears a strong resemblance to two other women in the book, and the photograph in the Red Book is of a different woman altogether. The glass transom over the entrance to Mahogany Hall, in which Lulu White is emblazoned in amber glass jewels, was one of the mansion's distinguishing features. Born Mary Anna Doubler in New Orleans, Josie Arlington escaped extreme poverty to become one of Storyville's most successful madams. She took the surname Arlington from a fashionable Hot Springs, Arkansas, resort hotel she admired, and she applied the name to her brothel at 225 N Basin Street. The Arlington is advertised in the 1905 Blue Book, as the most decorative and costly fitted out sporting palace ever placed before the American public. In October 1906, Josie Arlington left her brothel in the care of her longtime associate, Anna Casey, and moved into a substantial private residence at 2721 Esplanade Avenue. The house was moved to its current location, 2863 Grand Route Street John, around 1922 when the school board purchased the Esplanade land for the construction of McDonough No. 28 school. As New Orleans developed, Storyville's back of town location became more central. In 1908, the train terminal at Canal and Basin Streets, one block from Storyville, was completed. To reach the station, trains traveled past the Basin Street bordellos, where the often naked waved to the passengers from balconies. Different citizens and groups attacked Storyville, urging the mayor to close, or at least move, the district. To some, Storyville represented a threat to young women. To others, Storyville threatened the racial order. In 1917, the city attempted to relocate all non-white to the uptown district. Several madams, including Willie Piazza and Lulu White, fought the measure and won. The city reworded the ordinance, but before it went into effect, the district was abolished. Storyville was less than five miles from the naval training station, and when Navy Secretary Josephus Daniels made clear his desire that Storyville close, Mayor Martin Behrman acquiesced, ordering it closed by midnight November 12, 1917. Pro continued, but Storyville lost its cachet and the neighborhood declined.